Okay, so we are starting a, a series through, we're, we're taking a break from our study on Matthew. Uh, I honestly think we're going to be spending at least a year going through the book of Matthew. Uh, and so we're taking a break from that during the summer, and we're going to spend some time on a study called Marvel. Uh, and if you want to open up your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11, uh, if you don't have a Bible, we have Bibles in the back. You're more than willing to take home with you. And if you use one of those Bibles, the page will be 1212 back there. But as you're uh, turning to uh, Hebrews chapter 11, as we'll be kind of using that as our, our springboard this morning, let me kind of explain this idea of, of marvel and, and what we're doing. Uh, we want to talk about stories that cause you to be amazed. And we have a book that is filled with those kind of stories. And we have examples of people that have done marvelous, incredible things that have come before us. But I love the idea of talking about how our Bible is not a book about things that God just used to do. We believe God still wants to do marvelous things today. Can I get an amen? Okay. So... With that in mind, you may be asking, I mean, come on, Marvel, does that really fit in with the church idea? Uh, two weeks ago, we, we talked about Jesus being tempted and tested in the desert, and how that was a big deal. It's like a big, huge fight between good and evil. And when Jesus overcame Satan in the desert, it's like he came down and he was willing to take on uh, hunger and take on attacks of Satan to rescue his bride and his people. And so Jesus is, in a lot of ways, to use modern day terms, he's an incredible hero who rescues his people. Uh, do you guys, how many guys ever saw this movie when it came out? Taken with Liam Neeson, okay? Uh, I, I remember vividly when I saw the trailer. Uh, the trailer is, you know, he has a, a college daughter who she goes off to Europe uh, to, to, for, for her senior trip after college and her graduation trip, and, and she's kidnapped. And as she's getting ready to be kidnapped, she has her phone. It's very convenient. She has her phone uh, as she's being kidnapped talking to her father. She might have wanted to call the police. That seems like a good idea rather than just talking to her dad. But as she's talking to her dad, she's saying, Dad, these men are trying to kidnap me. And it's funny, he says, I need you to hide under the bed. And she hides under the bed, and then he says, now they're going to take you. Well, if he knew that, why did she hide under the bed, okay? Uh, but anyways, as, as she's hiding under the bed, the, the bad guys come in, the kidnappers, and they pull her out, they take her away. And one of the bad guys, the criminal, picks up the cell phone, and Liam Neeson has that famous line where he says, I don't have a Liam Neeson voice, I'll have to try here. <clears throat> okay, I don't know who you are. If you want money, I have none. But what I do have is a very particular set of skills, skills over a long career that makes life for you, people like you nightmare. If you let my daughter go now, we'll forget the whole thing. But if you don't let her go, I will look for you. I will find you and I will kill you. Okay. Yeah, it's terrifying, isn't it? Okay, all right. When I saw that trailer, God, God talks to us in different ways, I know, and I'm weird. I did youth ministry for 20 years, and, and so I'm really weird, because God kind of said to me as I saw that trailer, he just kind of said, Rob, that's the story of me and you. Back in the garden, my, the, 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 the child that I love, that daughter that I love, she was taken away. She was deceived. She was lied to. She fell to sin. And you were taken away from me and you were sent out of the garden. And ever since then, all the way from the garden, all the way through the story of Jesus hanging on the cross, it's a story of Jesus and of God trying to rescue you because you were taken away from him. And he's willing to fight. He's willing to risk everything. He's willing to suffer. He's even willing to die to rescue you. So yes, the idea of action heroes, the idea of somebody fighting to rescue people, of course that fits church. Of course that fits the story of God. We talked about two weeks ago. We're going to learn this song, hopefully two Sundays from now. We're going to be playing this song and singing this song. And I love the words of this song. It's this image of a superhero who's willing to do whatever is necessary to rescue the person that he loves. And it says, there's no shadow you won't light up. There's no mountain you won't climb, out, climb up as you're coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. No lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. We have a God who will chase after you, who will fight for you, and who will rescue you if you'll let him. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for that story. Thank you that you've come. 
You didn't come to judge us. You didn't come to, to damn us. You didn't come to make us feel guilty and ashamed. You came to make us feel loved. You came to make us feel valuable. Thank you for that. And Father, as we spend the next several weeks talking about people who have amazing, marvelous stories, I pray we won't just go, oh, God used to use people, but that we'll realize you still use people today in marvelous ways. We ask these things in your son's name. And the church says, amen. So during this series, we need your help. Uh, we, instead of just you sitting there and doing your best to stay awake, you're doing a pretty good job so far, by the way. Instead of just you sitting there, we want to encourage you guys to be involved in the, the series throughout the summer. And so there's three things we're going to ask for your help with, okay? One of the things is, we can think this is kind of fun, we want for you to guess who these people are that we're going to be talking about ahead of time. So I'm going to put up a name. See, we're kind of, we're kind of going off of superhero names. And, and who could that name represent in the Bible? So we'll, we'll do a really easy one. So one of our lessons is going to be on the Hulk. Okay, Who, what biblical character do you know that's really mean and really grumpy and really strong? Besides me, really strong. Okay, obviously, Samson, all right? So what we're going to do is several times throughout the study, we're going to give you guys, hey, here's the next four lessons. You guys have to vote and guess who it is we're going to be talking about, okay? Matt's not here, so I get to pick on him. So obviously, Ant-Man is going to be what is Matt, okay? All right, just kidding, all right? Uh, I don't even know who Electra is, all right? I, I was struck by lightning years ago. I could be Electra. Okay, anyways, so we're going to, just kind of a fun little thing where we're going to ask you guys to guess who you think we're going to be talking about in the future, okay? The second thing that we're excited about, we want to ask the teens especially to help with this, and for the children who all headed out to uh, children's worship, we're going to ask for them to help tell the origin stories of these superheroes. And so we're going to have the interns, oh, by the way, you're doing this this summer, okay? We're going to have the interns go over and record like one of the Salzman's boys, and we're going to give you like two minutes to tell us the history, the origin story of, of the Hulk. Do you know the Hulk's real name? Dang, see, he's ready to go, okay? But, yeah, <laughs> Brad is willing to applaud for that, okay, all right? So, and, and, and the reason we want to record our kids telling these origin stories is because do you remember the excitement when you were a kid with your superhero? Do you remember how... You used to pretend and imagine that maybe there was something special about you, that maybe you had a superpower, that maybe you could rescue people. And I don't know how many of you guys were ever guilty of this, but I did this a lot when I was a kid. I would go find the one red cape, the one red bed sheet or whatever it was in my house. And man, I would take that thing and I would put it on, especially when my parents were around. And I would take that thing and I would clip it on with whatever I could find there, and I would run around the house pretending I had superpowers. And I'm really embarrassed, but you did it too. I would like to stand in front of the mirror and really flex, you know, okay? All right, anybody, anybody else ever do that? Anyone? Me and Brad, that's it, okay. You guys are all dead inside. That's all I have to say to that, all right? You, 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 need, the, you need the Lord, all right? But do you remember the excitement of, oh, I love that superhero. I wish I could be like that superhero. I wish I could rescue people. I wish I could be heroic. Oh, but we know what happens, don't we? We know that over time, we start to realize that just putting that cape around my neck doesn't make any difference. We start to realize we can't fly. We start to just lose all hope that there's anything special about us or that we can ever make a difference in the world. It's kind of sad that that dies inside of us, isn't it? So, as we go through this study, uh, we we're going we're to kind of go off of this idea of Marvel comic books and people that are amazing, stories in the Bible that are amazing. I don't know if you guys are big into comic books. I did youth ministry for 20 years, so I'm a little bit on the nerdy side. Uh, and something that I loved about Marvel comics, and that's a huge thing right now, as you guys have probably seen the movies coming out, you can't go to see a movie without there being a trailer for another Marvel comic coming out. But something that I love about the Marvel comics is that they didn't just only show the good side of the heroes. They showed the tragedy. They showed the hardships. They showed the things that they went through. They showed the struggles they had in life. And I think that's interesting because Hebrews chapter 11 does the same thing in some ways. Uh, let's see, let will give you guys a quick pop quiz here. Hebrews 11, uh, lots of times it has a title, depending on what translation you're reading. But it's, what's the title it usually gives it? Something of faith. What? Faith. The what? The heroes of faith. 
As, as, as the Hebrew writer is going through this, he's talking, he's looking back in the Old Testament. He's looking back saying, oh, do you remember this person and how God used them in a powerful, marvelous way? So let's go through these really quick together and look at some of the heroes of the faith in Hebrews chapter 11. Chapter 11, verse 7. It says, by faith, Noah, when warned about these things, not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. What an amazing, incredible story that Noah trusted God enough to build the ark and people made fun of him and he rescued him and his family. And then later on we hear that he ended up getting drunk and shaming himself in front of his family. And his sons were so ashamed of him, they went in as he laid naked and passed out from drinking, and they had to cover him with a blanket to cover up his shame. Verse 8, by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place that he would later receive as his inheritance, he obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Typical male attitude. I don't have a clue where he's going, but he put his trust. God says, go, and I'm going to send you where you don't know where I'm sending you, but you just got to trust me. And Abraham was a man of faith, and he did that. What an amazing, marvelous guy. Oh yeah, and, and later, when God was taking too long to give him a son through his wife Sarah, he decided that well, maybe God doesn't know what he's talking about. Maybe God can't do miraculous, marvelous things. And so maybe we, maybe we should come up with another plan, and we, I should have a child with a different woman. Surely that won't cause any problems later in life, right? I'll name him Ishmael, and, and he'll go on to have people who follow him. Surely that won't cause trouble later in life, will it? Well, what about Abraham? Okay, maybe he, he did some great things. Well, how about his wife? I think it's interesting. Hebrews is being really kind to Sarah here, okay? And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she con uh, considered him faithful, who made the promise. Oh, Sarah was, she was in her 80s or 90s when, when God showed up and said, you're going to have a child, and her response was What? She laughed out loud at God. And he said, you're laughing. I'll tell you what, when you have your child, why don't you name your child Isaac, which means laughter. Now Sarah, wow, she, so sure she laughed, but she ended up having that child. And wow, what an amazing, awesome thing. And Sarah also was a very judgmental mother who when she told Abraham, why don't you have another child with, with, with my handmaiden, we'll name, her, we'll name him Ishmael, that she got jealous of Hagar and Ishmael, and so she told Abraham, take them and send them out into the desert. Get rid of them. Surely, then we'll cause trouble later, having you know, problems between these two brothers. That's what could happen? And so how about Isaac, their son? By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, his two sons, in uh, regard to their future. Isaac is this great man. He's one of the patriarchs who learned from his father to be very, very opinionated and one-sided on favoring one child over another child. And so Isaac loved Esau, but he kind of put up with Jacob. Well, let's keep following the story down the line. Verse 21. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each Joseph's, uh, Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. So it's talking about Jacob after he'd gone through so much of his life that he, was, that, that he blessed his sons. And Jacob also, his name meant deceiver. And do you remember how he stole from his brother and how he lied to his blind father? Man, this, 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 the, the heroes of faith are... It sounds like they've done some pretty awesome things, but it sounds like they've also done some really not-so-great things. By faith, Moses. Okay, good. Now we're talking about Moses. We've been talking about Moses the past several days. What an amazing guy. When he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, he chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy fleeting pleasures of sin. Moses, this man who rescued God's people out of slavery and also murdered an Egyptian soldier and hid the body in the sand. And when he realized that somebody knew about it, he ran away so that he couldn't be punished. Well, how about the people of Israel, as they, the Hebrews, as they're sent out into the desert 
By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. And then as soon as they got across, and they got hungry, and they got thirsty, they began to complain to Moses and say, I wish we were still slaves in Egypt. And they picked up stones to kill Moses. A couple more as we finish up. How about verse 31? By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were uh, disobedient. I think this one pretty much explains itself, doesn't it? Give me, hold on a second. A prostitute named Rahab? She's mentioned as one of the heroes of our faith, of what we believe in? Yeah, matter of fact, she's the great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus. Rahab, the prostitute? And then it goes in 32, says, and, and what more shall I say? The writer says, I don't have time to tell you about Gideon or Samson or David. Gideon, that guy who was such a great warrior who when God came to him, he just made excuses and said, nope, you got the wrong guy. You can't use me. Get somebody else to do your hard work. I don't want to do this. That incredible, amazing guy, Samson, the Hulk, who several times we know was sleeping with women he wasn't married to and was oftentimes drunk and was out for vengeance and violence. King David, okay, thank goodness. David, a man after God's own heart, yes, like that, that, that hero of the faith, King David, who had an affair with a woman that wasn't his wife and then murdered that woman's husband and tried to cover the whole thing up. Are you getting the picture here? The, the picture is, is that God takes people who have done some really stupid, sinful, dumb things in their life, and he says, if you'll put your faith in me, I can do something marvelous in your life. Too often, we've got this attitude of, well, I come to church, and obviously the people who get up on the stage, they're the holy professional people of the Lord, a man of the cloth. They're the ones who deserve, that God will use those people. Let's read our scriptures. God loves to use the broken. God loves to use those who've been rebellious against him in the past. God prefers not to use the, the varsity team player. He prefers, prefers to use not even the JV. He prefers to use the third string on the JV. He loves to use the underdog and the people that have blown it. Those are the people he does marvelous, incredible things through. If they will put their trust in him, they, he can do marvelous, incredible things. So James chapter 5, jumping over to James. I've talked about this scripture before, but I just love how it's talking about Elijah, this amazing prophet who's done these incredible, amazing things. I mean, you talk about a superhero. Elijah shows up one day and he says, send a thousand other prophets of the false god Baal. Have them come down and we're going to have a show off. He's not afraid. There's a thousand men that are against him, and he's not afraid to take them on. And he does this amazing thing where he prays, and actually fire falls from the sky. You talk about a superhero power. I mean, it's almost like, it's almost like he shot lasers out of his eyes, okay? God uses somebody like Elijah. What an amazing man, just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. And again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. What an amazing person. And you know what? James makes sure that he knows that he wants us to hear. He's a human being just like you. There's no difference. third thing we want to ask for you guys to do to help us during this series is we want for you to tell the story of your heroes. It, it's too often we sit down with the Bible and we read these stories and we go, oh, that's so cool that God used to do things back in the book of Acts. And we think that God doesn't do things today. And so we want for you to tell your stories of modern day heroes that you've seen in your life in different ways. And so I want to give an example, and, and, I, and I promise you this, I'm, I'm not trying to get bonus points. I'm not just doing this because it's Mother's Day. Uh, me and Tammy were having a conversation about a week ago, and I realized something as I had this conversation with her. I realized that Tammy's mother is a brave, heroic person. Let me tell you why Tammy's mother is a brave, heroic person. 
Okay? So each day we want to for each each week we're gonna have you guys get up and share stories of, of everyday heroes. Here's a picture of Tammy and and uh, and her, her mom there on the side and, and both our kids. This was uh, this was Easter several years ago at a beautiful sunset. And Tammy's mom, her name is Glenna. Some of you guys have met Glenna. And and Glenna, uh, she's she's lived in the Dallas area most of her life, and she can't stand the traffic, she can't stand the heat, she just doesn't really care for the culture out there, and she's wanted to move to Colorado for so long. Well, probably about six years ago, I guess, she moved up to Colorado and she lived in our basement for a while. And then she lived with uh, Tammy's brother for a while. And and she just said, I love living here. She said, I've got to get my own place. And so she found this awesome, beautiful little, I think like 700 square foot cabin up in Bailey, Colorado. And you go up there and it's just nice and cool and it's quiet. And pretty much every time you go up there and you pull in, there's deer in the backyard. And it's just at nighttime you go out and you're far enough away from Denver that the, 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 the stars are totally different out there. She loves her quiet little cabin up in Bailey. She loves the different culture here in Colorado, just how it's slower and it's not so materialistic where she's at. She loves those things. But Tammy's mom, Glenna, also loves her kids. Tammy has a sister who is 13 years younger than she is, and Tammy's sister's name is Leslie. And Leslie, uh, Leslie lives in Kentucky. She lives a long ways away from us, uh, and she lives in Kentucky. And Leslie doesn't have just one child, or two, or three, or four, or five. Leslie just had her sixth child. And Leslie is not even in her 40s yet. So it is very easy to say. Leslie is a little overwhelmed at times. Uh, She's put this picture on Facebook a while back, and this was her trying to go get groceries. She realized as she took three kids to groceries, she's like, where am I going to put the groceries? There's nowhere to put food in this thing. i got to carry these three kids with me. And, And Leslie, man, she loves her kids, and she's a good mom, but she's overwhelmed, and she's worn out. And so Tammy's mom loves Colorado. Tammy's mom loves her cabin. But Tammy's mom said, I need to go help my daughter. Now, now here's the thing. If Glenna would have packed up and headed off to Kentucky because she was excited about living in that part of the country, that would be a good move. If Glenna packed up and headed off to Kentucky because she says, oh, I found a house down there that is so cute and so wonderful and I'm going to move into it, that would have been a smart move. If Glenn would have packed up and known that when I get down there, I've got a job waiting on me, that would have been a great move. Glenna didn't have any of those things. As we helped her pack up her little car, as we helped empty out her cabin that she loves, as she said goodbye to that little place in the mountains, And as she drove over 20 hours to her daughter's house, and as she got out, she said, okay, I need to find a job. I need to find a place to live. I hope there's a church around here that that, that I can be a part of, that I'll enjoy. I I hope I can make some friends out here. Glenna's move wasn't a smart move. Glenna's move was a courageous, brave move move. Because Glenna wants to help rescue people who are suffering and people who need help. Glenna isn't in the Old Testament. Glenna isn't in the New Testament. Glenna is a human being just like us. And she's one of my everyday spiritual heroes. And I talked to her about this, and I was telling her, Glenna, thank you. Thank-. I said, you're a better person than I am. I would only make that move if I knew I was getting a pay raise. If I, like, I'm, I'm moving to Kentucky as soon as they get a ski resort there. I'm all down with that. That sounds great. And, and I, as, I, as I talked to her about that, and I said, Glenna, thank you for being brave. Thank you for being courageous. She just said, Rob, I just have faith. This is what God is calling me to do. And it's not going to be easy, and it's not going to be fun, and it's going to be stressful, but I just trust God. In Hebrews 11, every one of those heroes of faith, they say, by faith, Noah, by faith, Abraham did this. Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Rahab, Gideon, Samson, David. By faith, they put their faith not in themselves, not in their own power. They put their faith in God. Because reality is, we can put a cape on, but we know 
There's nothing marvelous in ourselves that can rescue people. So we don't need to put our faith in us, not in our cape. We need to put our faith in somebody bigger who's already proven that they can rescue people. Let's pray.